I'm Lorian Univer. I'm a senior research fellow at IFPRI, and together with Delia Grace at the International Livestock Research Institute, we've edited a series of Vision 2020 briefs on aflatoxins, finding solutions for improved food safety. Aflatoxins are naturally occurring toxins that are the result of a um, fungus that grows on plants and tends to be uh, more prevalent in the tropics on many food staples there. Well, aflatoxins really cause two kinds of risks, public health risks and market risks. In public health terms, they've been clearly linked to liver cancer and to deaths from liver cancer, but perhaps even more important in Africa is uh, their chronic impacts in terms of child stunting, that is reducing uh, growth in small children who rely on staples that may be contaminated, and also in terms of immune suppression, that is uh, making people more susceptible to disease. In terms of market risks, um, the prevalence of aflatoxins can limit the ability of small producers to sell crops into markets for commercial animal feed, processed food, and even into export markets where uh, standards may be very strict. Well, aflatoxins are a ubiquitous risk. Um, the fungal strains occur everywhere in the environment. They can um, get on the crop and start to grow uh, in the field while the crop's being produced. Even if there's only a little bit of fungus on the crop when it's harvested, uh, if, if it isn't handled carefully, isn't dried to a certain uh, moisture content, isn't stored in good conditions, then um, uh, the fungus can grow and produce these toxins. So because it can occur at all these points in the supply chain, it really has to be managed carefully uh, and has to be managed throughout the process from production to consumption. Because control is going to have to be a multifaceted effort. It's going to have to address uh, the problem all along the supply chain. It's going to involve new technologies. It's going to involve market incentives. It's going to involve policies. We actually have a set of briefs addressing each of those areas. So in terms of technology, we have a set of briefs from the other international agricultural research centers that have uh, research programs addressing aflatoxin control. Things like biocontrol, which has been adapted uh, from the U.S. that is being piloted in Nigeria, shows a lot of promise. Uh, there's also research to develop better plant host resistance and to address integrated management for control of aflatoxins. In terms of market incentives, which will be the focus of our launch event on November 5th, we have a series of briefs from uh, both private companies and NGOs who are working to develop new market institutions to reward smallholders for adopting new technologies and reducing aflatoxins. So finding ways to transmit those market signals and, and uh, reward producers through higher prices is important. Uh, and then finally, policy, of course, will have to uh, enable all of those changes. And so there's a variety of efforts policymakers can undertake, and there's new efforts to coordinate policy in Africa, for example, through the Partnership for Aflatoxin Control, uh, and so that we have a variety of briefs uh, outlining those efforts. So taken together, what we've tried to do is to pull together the current ongoing um, efforts in different arenas to provide people with really an overview of what's possible and what's going on now.